Good morning. My name is George Litzer and I'm the new Executive Director for Canadian Church of God Ministries. On behalf of our team at the Regional Office, Ken, Wendy, Mark, Shannon and Dave, I would like to wish you all a meaningful and blessed Easter celebration. The light and hope of what we celebrate today is so desperately needed in the face of the challenging and uncertain times in which we're living. If you're seeing or hearing this, I celebrate that you are in some way connected to a loving, supportive, hope-filled community that believes God has a way of bringing good out of bad, that Jesus is alive and well, and that he is at work in our lives and in the lives of the people we rub shoulders with, bringing light and hope to our dark days. These last weeks have delivered a host of unprecedented changes into our lives and into the work we do as local congregations. In speaking with the pastors and leaders within our network of churches, I know they have labored to figure out how best to minister in these days of physical distancing, how to serve and support the most vulnerable in our communities, as well as how to sustain ministries of the church in the face of a decline in financial support due to the economic impact of the COVID-19 crisis. I am so encouraged and so proud of the pastors, leaders, and church family members in our region who have responded to the challenge to innovate in order to continue the work God has called us to. We are hearing story after story of church families banding together in various ways to stay connected in worship and teaching. We're watching family members throughout our network take the responsibility to build community by regularly calling seniors or FaceTiming with friends and neighbors or meeting in small groups over Zoom or Hangouts. And we're celebrating those in our faith families who are finding creative ways to serve the people in their neighborhoods and network of relationships who need some extra help in these tough times. Instead of people just going to church, we are witnessing the church be the church. And we are so excited about all the good that we are seeing in the face of great challenge. Please know that our team at the regional office has redoubled its efforts to serve and resource your leaders at this time. And we are committed to journey with you as well as to work with you so that the church doesn't just survive, but thrive. In days such as these, where so much seems to be changing so quickly, we need something to hang on to, something strong and stable, something unshakable and reliable. We need to focus our attention on what doesn't change. So on this Easter Sunday, we not only celebrate the risen Jesus, but we anchor our hearts and minds in the truth that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. We can be sure of the fact that his love for us and our church families has not changed and that he cares about us and will see us through. May God bless your time of worship and celebration this weekend. Happy Easter. Well, good morning. It's Easter celebration morning and i hope that you and your families are doing well today we're obviously continuing to do church a little bit differently but one thing that uh, i think these last weeks have taught us is that the church is not about a building the church is about the expression of god's people and god's power working mightily within his people and sometimes even outside of, of of us as well that for his glory and for his purposes he has plans um, and he has uh, uh, plans that are set in motion and he is wanting willing participants and open hearts and open lives and I hope as you uh, join this morning I hope that maybe you can agree with that that uh, that in your life that uh, you've already uh, chosen Jesus as Lord and maybe for the first time uh, if you're tuning in and maybe uh, you know there's some wrestling points in your life and maybe even uh, these last few weeks have brought more more questions and more concerns and fears than than answers. I'm glad that you're tuning in, and I just pray that, uh, that the Lord, by His Spirit, would be working uh, through um, through uh, this broadcast this morning and uh, and long afterwards. So, uh, one of the things when we gather on Sunday mornings, when when our church, Rosedale Community Church of God. Uh, uh, meet on a an Easter Sunday morning is uh, well usually we've already had Easter morning breakfast and um, well you'll just have had to do that on your own this morning uh, when we gather for worship on Easter morning one of the things that we almost always 
uh, say together is the Lord is risen and then the people will say he is risen indeed. So let's let's just do that as we start this morning. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for Resurrection Sunday, Lord, and I thank you that by your power uh, and your work um, in humanity and your love for the world that not only did you send your son Jesus into the world but as Jesus laid down his life and as we uh, remembered that on Good Friday uh, we are reminded this Easter Sunday just like all Easter Sundays that there was a resurrection and uh, there was an empty tomb an empty grave to remind us that uh, not only was sin paid for and atoned for but also there is a resurrection life and uh, for all who believe and all who have received you Jesus as Savior and Lord that is our hope that just as the power of God raised you from the grave that uh, our hope is beyond this life and our hope is in eternity with with you in Jesus name amen I just want to I guess begin with a, a song that uh, has been running through my mind uh, and heart this week uh, so I want, just want to share it with you it's called Jesus Messiah and if the words are as they have been um, on the side uh, please feel free and, and, and that to worship along with sin, who knew no sin, that we might become His righteousness, humbled Himself and carried the cross, love so amazing, love so amazing. Blessed 
I hope that uh, each of you, whether you are um, tuning in by yourself this morning or you're with a, a, a family group this morning, um, I just hope and pray uh, that you have had a blessed weekend already and as you uh, have come to tune in that you have a, a heart of of celebration and a heart of expectancy. Um, one of thinking of, of my life and thinking about growing up in the church. My dad was uh, a pastor and uh, his, uh, pastor's son, uh, pastor's family. Um, we were at church, the building often, and uh, we're usually the first ones to be there and the last ones to leave. And uh, I just has such good memories of, of Easter. Um, you know, whether it was the, the lesson in Sunday school or the the celebration and the singing uh, that I remember as, as a child or the sermon, it was all just uh, the kind of the pinnacle moment, really. And, and uh, you know, when we're gathering on a day like today, it really is the, the pinnacle moment. I viewed uh, Easter much the way I viewed Christmas. Um, you know, it was just an exciting time. And of course, for Easter, it wasn't for us about the gifts. We, we uh, obviously weren't uh, exchanging gifts the way it uh, happens at Christmas time. But um, just a, an exciting time. A lot of times there was extra family that had come in and uh, were celebrating with us and then would stay over. And uh, I just remember such, such good memories. And my memories of Easter at... Uh, uh, at church were just so full of the joy of the Lord and the uh, just the understanding I guess that uh, you know Jesus paid it all he paid the way for sin for uh, our sin to be forgiven the sin of you and the sin of me and the sin of all mankind and for us to have received that gift by faith um, it just kind of culminated in, in Easter Sunday morning, just celebrating the fact that not only was sin paid for, but life and everlasting and abundant life, that same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the grave was also our, our guarantee that, uh, you know, it, by faith that we claim Jesus as our Savior and, and Lord, not only is sin paid for, but there is life forevermore uh, with with our Lord. And uh, in our congregation, uh, these last three months, we've had a few of uh, ones that, if we've been in the church for a long time, there were special, special people and uh, a lot of special memories. And so for us, in these last few months, we've we've tasted uh, kind of that that sense of humanity that is raw, where when loved ones pass on, there's that sense of loss and that sense of sadness and that sense of longing for them to be with us, and we miss them and we we miss time spent with them. But I'll tell you that for each of them, uh, this is an Easter uh, like no other. And uh, we just think, oh, we just have kind of a, a foretaste of what is to come when we are one day face to face with Jesus, our Lord and our Savior and our soon and coming King. For a few moments this morning as we're gathered, I just wanted to um, center in on some thoughts and ideas that uh, really are just coming right out of the scripture. And when I was thinking again about my own journey with God, you know, starting very young as a child growing up in church and going to church with my mom and dad, but having to, like all of us, make that faith, not the faith of my mom and dad, but making it and establishing it and rooting it into my heart and my life, um, the reality that Jesus was for me. Uh, Jesus as Savior 
was for me. Jesus as uh, the resurrected Lord that we celebrate today, that's for me. And by faith, I had to receive um, that reality for myself. When I was a child um, at home, when I was a child growing up in the church and going to Sunday school and things like that, one of the primary teaching books uh, that were used a lot of times, especially when I was younger, in just telling stories was a, a Bible story book. It was called Edgar Meyer's Bible Story Book, and uh, I still have uh, a copy of it, and many of you in your homes probably do too. And um, I was looking at it again through trying to think of it even through the eyes of a child uh, and a child of faith this, uh, this week. And in it, it has um, a part in it that's just called Jesus Rises from the Dead. And what it's done, the, the one who put this Bible story book together, took from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John's gospel. All of the gospels record something about the resurrection, something about the fact that Jesus was no longer in the grave, that he was not dead, that he was he was dead and buried three days, but that wasn't the rest of the story. That uh, Sunday's reality was, was really a living truth that each of us need to understand and believe and receive for ourselves. So in this Bible story book, it just takes those four gospel accounts and, and kind of crafts a bit of a, a story uh, and reads a little bit more like a story. And I just wanted to read it for you, and I, I hope that it blesses you this morning. The hours dragged slowly for the Roman soldiers who guarded Jesus' grave. No one had come. Perhaps they laughed at the Jews for being afraid. As dawn came, the ground began to tremble. Another earthquake had come. The frightened soldiers saw a mighty angel come down, roll the stone from the grave, and sit on it. The angel's face was like lightning, and his garments were as white as snow. The soldiers fell to the ground, trembling and helpless, and lay there as if they were dead. As soon as they were able, they fled into the city to report to Jesus' enemies. When the women came to the garden, they found the grave empty. At first, they didn't see the angel, and they wondered who had stolen the body of their Lord. Mary Magdalene ran to tell Peter and John that Jesus' body had been taken away. After Mary had gone, the other women saw an angel in the tomb. They were afraid and bowed themselves to the ground. The angel said, don't be afraid. Why are you seeking the living among the dead? Jesus is not here. He is risen as he said. Go quickly and tell his disciples and Peter that he's alive and will meet them in Galilee. The women ran from the place filled with joy, yet trembling with excitement and fear. The good news seemed too wonderful to be true. They, still, they believed and they hurried to tell the disciples and other friends. The disciples couldn't believe the glad message. Peter and John ran to see for themselves. When they came to the tomb, they found no one, but they saw the grave clothes that Joseph had wrapped around Jesus' body. Peter and John were sure now that Jesus was alive once more. Mary Magdalene had not stayed in the garden long enough to hear the angel's message. Now she returned longing to find where her Lord had been taken. Entering the garden again, she stood by the empty grave and wept. And then she, st she stooped down, looked into the grave, and saw two angels. One was sitting at the head and the other at the foot where Jesus' body had been. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She replied, Because they've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Then turning around, she saw Jesus standing near. But tears blinded her eyes and she didn't know him. He too asked, why do you weep? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, well, sir, have you carried away my Lord? Tell me where you've laid him. 
Then Jesus said, Mary. And she knew his voice. The joy that filled Mary's heart, she fell at his feet and she cried, Master. Jesus said, go at once and tell my friends that I will ascend to my father and to your father, to my God and your God. I just love that story. And even as I read it, I could just remember uh, those early days of my childhood, just listening to that story and kind of the joy and the wonder uh, was just returning. And I, I hope that that blessed you as well. The Lord is risen and he is risen indeed. There's a part in John's gospel in the 12th chapter and verse 24 that says that before Jesus's death, that he told his disciples, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. You know, there's something interesting about a seed. Seeds are symbols of new life that are going to come. And you know, through the wonder of agriculture, if a seed is planted on good soil, if a seed is given adequate water and is energized by the sunlight, it's going to grow. And it's going to grow into a new plant. And in time, with enough loving care, with enough attention, that plant will grow. And that plant will produce seeds of its own. And nature's life cycle is one of those reminders to us of the way in which God brings new life through death and through resurrection. And it's the resurrection of Jesus that is the focus of this Easter morning and all Easter mornings. The resurrection of Jesus gives you and I the opportunity to experience new life. Because Jesus died, but because he rose again, we can be transformed as the life of Christ springs up inside of us and we can grow, we can mature, and we too can produce seeds that will continue the spiritual life cycle of the kingdom of God. We know that it's been said that uh, God has no grandchildren, only children, and it doesn't matter if we are old or very, very young. By faith, we can become part of God's family. We can become his children, but only through faith and trust in Jesus Christ. But then begins that cycle all over again. I don't know, um, for any of you that uh, have young children at home, I, I was reminded, again, thinking about what we're missing, not being in uh, the school where we do our, our church gatherings and that. And one of the things that happens around this time of year, when you go into the elementary uh, part of the school, and especially those younger classes, you know, kindergarten, grade one, grade two, oftentimes what you'll see on the, on the windowsills is uh, bean plants or, or things that are starting to grow. And that's one of the things that is so exciting about, um, you know, uh, just the whole process of, of, of schooling and that. And now if you're schooling from home, if that's something you're doing, I would just encourage you, if you haven't already, maybe plant a seed. Plant a, a seed in your windowsill. Uh, it can be any kind of seed. And it's a great activity for, you know, for parents to do. And uh, you might want to plant things that eventually you're going to transfer into your vegetable garden or your flower garden or maybe you know you're going to just plant a single seed uh, into a cup and fill it with dirt and you're just going to watch it you're going to pay t attention over the next several days you're going to make sure that the seed has proper soil you're going to pay attention to the see if it's got enough water. You don't want to water it too much, but you want to water it just right. You don't want it to be too dry and you want it to get sunlight and you watch that seed. That seed in a sense is going to surrender its life, lay down its life, and in the process there's going to be a beautiful plant that's going to, to come and um, it's just a reminder that Jesus Again, when he gave up his life, that's exactly what he was doing. He was surrendering. He was giving up his life on the cross 
for our sin, to make a way for us to be united with the Father and to have resurrection life. As Jesus rose from the grave, that's his promise, that just as he conquered uh, not only sin on the cross, but death uh, in his own grave, that same power of God is at work in our lives. And spiritually, we can be made alive in Christ and we can be set for eternity an eternity and an eternal hope with Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's just a, a wonderful truth. Um, I just wanted to share another passage of, of Scripture. And this, this actually is in the, gospel, I mean, in the book of Acts, just a little bit further down in the, from the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And in Acts, it's the birth of the church. It is what happens to these same followers of Jesus, these disciples, once Jesus was resurrected and once the Spirit came upon them and set them with a power that they didn't even know existed before and they were set on fire with fire in their hearts, you know, to, to be the church, not to gather, but to be the church. And this is one of those stories that, that takes place with the the birth of the church and what was going on. And this is from Acts chapter 16, verses 11 through 15, and talks about this woman named Lydia. And it's interesting, we've got a younger uh, child in our, in our congregation whose name is Lydia, and I think she was named after uh, this particular woman in the Bible. And in Acts 16, beginning at verse 11, and then through verse 15, Paul is speaking and he's talking about uh, this journey that he was on from Troas, we put out to sea and we sailed straight from Samothrace. And the next day we went on to Neapolis. From there, we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony. And the leading city of that district was Macedonia. We stayed there for several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. And one of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. And when she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. And there's not a lot more that's actually said about this woman, but I, I just thought it was so interesting that this woman, Lydia, it says, was a worshiper of God and was listening to us. And she, she um, was a dealer in, in cloth, but the Lord during this time opens her heart and she listens eagerly what was said by Paul. So the disciples, they'd been traveling far and wide. They were uh, bringing with them their witness of Jesus, the resurrected Christ. And when they stop this place in Philippi, they come across this woman, Lydia. She's a religious woman. They call her a worshiper of God. However, the implication is that she's not yet experienced a life-changing encounter with the Holy Spirit. And as she listens to the apostles speak, and it says that the Lord opens her heart, and she's baptized. You know, for <coughs> each one of us, there's a moment, isn't there? There's, there's an encounter with God that leaves us forever changed forever transformed and you know until we allow the holy spirit to work his work within our hearts we remain much as we were perhaps worshipers but maybe not disciples you know over the years this transformation or this change has been expressed in uh, many different ways paul talks about it as a a peace that past all understanding. John Wesley 
he said that his heart had been strangely warned. There's an old song that we used to sing, and, and in the, the words of the song, it says, Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Something happened. And I knew it happened. There, there's an experience of God through his Holy Spirit in, in a real way when, when it happens. And this is what transpires for Lydia in Acts chapter 16. Something was happening that forever was changing her life and was changing the trajectory of her future. And, you know, God is... Is about doing something. Now, I think even in these last weeks, as so many things have kind of been taken away for us, things that we took for granted, and uh, in many ways, though, it's been slowing the pace of humanity down. And my prayer is that, you know, in this time that God can do something that maybe God can only do in times like these, where the sea of humanity is all together and they're going through the same crisis, the same concerns, the same fears, the same anxieties together. But I believe that that God has something in store that is unique and it's unique even for the church. And I mean I I more than than, than maybe most, I have no idea. But I tell you it to have Easter Sunday and to kind of just have it here and be uh, just with uh, with Shannon and, you know, uh, not to be able to gather together as worshipers under one roof and, and my, you know, extended uh, spiritual family, like that is, it's difficult stuff. But there's a joy in knowing that that God is with us. There's a joy in knowing that God has delivered us. There's a joy in knowing that God has resurrection life and resurrection power for his people. We are a pe the people now of the resurrection. That what has happened in Jesus is also and can also be true in our lives. So this is this moment that Lydia is going through at this moment. And, and I guess I just at this uh, time in, in the Easter Sunday for, for all of us, I just want to ask you, have you experienced God in a real way? Can you say in your life, something happened and now I know? Do you know God or do you simply know of him or know about him? Are you willing before God to open your heart and open your life to him? Maybe even for the first time. And, and, and if, if that's you this morning, as we close together, I just want to lead us in a prayer. And uh, if, if you this morning are listening and maybe you're not sure, uh, you know, if, if all was settled and, and life here as we know it were to end, and you don't know that you know where you'd be going, where you'd be sen spending eternity, I just want to let you know that the King of Glory, Jesus himself, is inviting you into his family. He's inviting you into his family because he loves us that much and he is he has paid the price, he has made the way where there was no other way. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. And he's washed me white as snow, and he can do the same for you. Let's pray. Would you pray with me? God, as we bow our heads and our hearts and humble ourselves before you, we are so thankful for Resurrection Sunday. And Lord, I pray for each one that's listening a blessedness and a peace, just like Paul said, that passes all human understanding. May it guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And Lord, for each one this morning, I pray that they would know that it would be settled in their hearts and settled in their minds and, and their spirits today that you are their Lord, that you are their Savior, that you are their soon and coming King. And no matter what is going on around, Lord, we need not fear because you are here 
and you are with us and you have made a way and you've given us a living hope through your son, Jesus. So Father, we thank you. And Lord, if there's anyone here this morning that is listening in, and Easter Sunday has never been anything more than maybe just a gathering time for family or maybe maybe even they'll go to church and worship with, with people, but they themselves maybe have, have not opened their heart's door to you. Lord, I pray that by faith, even as I'm praying this, Lord, that somebody will just take that step, that step of faith and say, Jesus here and now, I am putting my life's trust in your hands. The sin that I carry, it's a burden to my soul and uh, I don't want it anymore. And so I'm giving it to you and I'm giving myself to you. And I'm asking Jesus, not only that you forgive my sin, but I'm trusting that you also welcome me into the family of God, the family of faith. I want to live for you. I want to live for your glory. I want to be like that seed that, that dies to self and dies in, in, in what it was. And in so doing, something beautiful is going to grow. Something that is, that is going to bear fruit. That is something that is going to leave a legacy even for the next generation. Lord, I want that. And I want that for each one, Lord. And so I pray this in the blessed name of our our King Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. And from our family, my family, to, to yours, we wish you the most blessed of all Easter Sundays. And wherever you are, put the Lord first. Make him your life's trust. He will not disappoint. Amen. God bless you.